The F-80 Shooting Star, originally designated the P-80, was a pivotal aircraft in U.S. military aviation history. Its development marked a significant technological leap as the U.S. transitioned from piston engine aircraft to jets. The story of the F-80 is a tale of urgency, innovation, and the Cold War pressures that shaped military aviation in the mid-20th century. Origins of the F-80 The development of the F-80 began during the latter stages of World War II, a time when the world of aviation was rapidly evolving. In Europe, the German Luftwaffe had introduced the Messerschmitt ME-262, the first operational jet fighter, which showcased the potential of jet propulsion in combat. The ME-262 posed a significant threat to Allied air superiority, and it became clear to U.S. military planners that they would need to match or surpass this new technology if they hoped to maintain air dominance in future conflicts. In response, the U.S. Army Air Forces sought to develop their own jet fighter. This urgency was compounded by the fact that Germany's advancements in jet technology threatened to shift the balance of power in the skies. In 1943, the U.S. Army Air Forces issued a formal request for a jet-powered fighter capable of matching the ME-262, Enter Lockheed. The company's chief designer, Clarence Kelly Johnson, was one of the most innovative and forward-thinking engineers of the era. Johnson led the team at Lockheed's famed Skunk Works, a secretive development division known for rapid innovation in high-level projects. In 1943, under Johnson's leadership, Lockheed began work on what would become the F-80 Shooting Star. The timeline was ambitious. U.S. Army Air Forces wanted a prototype within six months, an incredibly tight deadline for a cutting-edge experimental aircraft. Development and Design Challenges The P-80's design was centered around the General Electric J-33 turbojet engine, a jet engine that could deliver the necessary thrust for high-speed flight. The challenge for Johnson's team was not only in designing an airframe that could house this engine, but also ensuring that the aircraft could operate at speeds and altitudes far exceeding those of traditional piston engine planes. The design of the P-80 featured a straight-wing configuration, a choice driven by the limitations of aerodynamics at the time, though later jet fighters would adopt swept wings to deal with the challenges of compressibility and drag at high speeds. The P-80's straight-wing design was suitable for early jet propulsion. Its sleek, streamlined fuselage allowed it to achieve speeds approaching 600 miles per hour, making it one of the fastest aircraft of its time. Remarkably, the first prototype, the XP-80, was completed in just 143 days, an astonishing feat of engineering. The prototype took its maiden flight on January 8, 1944, with test pilot Milo Burcham at the controls. The XP-80 performed well during testing, displaying excellent speed and maneuverability. However, like any groundbreaking technology, there were teething problems. Refinements were made to the airframe and engine, and subsequent prototypes were built to test different configurations and correct early issues. The F-80 in service, though, developed during World War II. The P-80 did not see combat in that conflict. By the time it was ready for operational use, the war in Europe had ended, and the Japanese surrender in the Pacific followed soon after. Nonetheless, the P-80 was adopted by the newly formed U.S. Air Force, which split from the U.S. Army in 1947, and redesignated as the F-80 Shooting Star in the late 1940s. It became the Air Force's first operational jet fighter. The Shooting Star's true test came during the Korean War, 1950 to 1953. At the start of the conflict, the F-80 was one of the primary jet fighters used by U.S. forces. It was tasked with a range of missions, from air-to-air -air combat to ground attack operations. In the early stages of the war, the F-80 performed admirably, holding its own against North Korean propeller-driven aircraft such as the Yakovlev Yak-9. However, the air war in Korea soon evolved. The introduction of the Soviet-built MiG-15, a swept-wing jet fighter, posed a new challenge for the F-80. The MiG-15 outclassed the shooting star in terms of speed, maneuverability, and overall performance. As a result, the F-80 was gradually phased out of air superiority roles and replaced by the F-86 Sabre, a newer jet that could compete with the MiG-15. Despite this, the F-80 continued to serve in ground attack roles, where its stability and robust design made it effective in close air support missions. Legacy and Impact 
The F-80 Shooting Star holds a significant place in U.S. military aviation history. It was the first U.S. jet to achieve an air-to-air -air kill when Lieutenant Russell J. Brown shot down a MiG-15 on November 8, 1950. This marked a milestone in the transition from propeller-driven combat to jet-powered aerial warfare. While the F-80 was eventually overshadowed by more advanced jets like the F-86, its development paved the way for the jet age in the U.S. military. The technological advancements made during the P-80 program influenced future aircraft designs and established Lockheed as a leader in jet propulsion technology. Moreover, the F-80's legacy extended beyond its service life. Its design was the basis for the development of the T-33, a two-seat trainer version that became one of the most widely used jet trainers in the world. The T-33 served with numerous air forces well into the late 20th century, helping to train generations of pilots in jet operations. Conclusion The F-80 Shooting Star was developed at a time of immense pressure, driven by the need to match the jet technology pioneered by the Germans during World War II. Its rapid development, innovative design, and eventual combat role in Korea highlighted the growing importance of jet propulsion in military aviation. While the F-80's combat career was relatively short-lived, its impact on the U.S. Air Force and its role in ushering in the jet age were profound. The shooting star not only symbolized American innovation, but also set the stage for the next generation of jet fighters that would dominate the skies in the decades to come.